All right, here's the second video I'm making on the Griptable Tools mode and the blueprints you can create for it. I The first video kind of went over the setup, shutdown, and the gizmo chain for the basics. Um, I'm going to just review them really fast. We're going to we're going to go over the nodes that are available. Uh, the script setup is kind of self-explanatory. It's where you generally would set up your script. So like the thing, the gizmos you need, the, you know, whatever you might be using there. Um, it happens immediately. So think of it like a, you know, on begin. The shutdown is also self-explanatory. On shutdown, depending on how we shut down, what should we do? So what should the final action be? Okay, so here's one I did not go over. Um, it is on script render. This gives you access to the render API. And with this render API, we can, uh, it has its own uh, nodes we can call. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to look for script. And we're going to go over this. Okay, so what we're going to make today is the draw line. Just so you know, I'm hijacking the snapping tool we made in the last video. So we're going to take gizmo. So we're going to get gizmo transform. My gizmo was called uh, gizmo1. And we're going to take this transform, break it, get its location. This location is going to be our end location. I'm just going to keep um, start location right now. But basically, you could use this. Obviously, you could use this in other ways. You can use this to draw lines. You can use, you know, draw shapes to make it a little thicker. There we go. Now, when we snap, we're going to have a line drawn from our gizmo to uh, zero. You could use this to, you know, make measuring tools. There was also a draw rectangle, if you saw. So we could draw a rectangle, transform the set to this. Width and height, we'll just have at 100 and 100, right? Be the same sort of thing, but I just wanted to show. Here's an example. So I actually should have made it bigger. 100 by 100 is the size of the box. <laughs> so here we go. And you can see a rectangle being drawn. So there we go. Okay, so that is what we can do with you rendering. Okay, and now we're going to work on on script draw HUD. With this, we get access to the object reference of the HUD API. With that access, we are able to do things like draw text to the screen. So like we can have a draw text array at location or draw text at location. We're going to draw at location. Location, we're going to set, I'm just going to set the gizmo again. So we're going to get gizmo transform. We have that gizmo. And then we're going to break this off. Okay, so let's use this to just get the name of the selected actor, right? So we're going to just get the name of the first one just so that I guess we could technically do the get array um, and use it for each thing. All right. And then we're going to get get display name. There we go. We got the name. As you can see, besides the location, we can also change the color and then we can shift the Y position. Uh, but also we can select if it's centered or not. All right. So let's plug that in. There you go. All we're doing is getting transform, getting this actor's name. So now while this is selected, it's going to tell us it's a cube. There you go. So that is two more nodes. That is the rendering and the script draw HUD. OK, so that's it for now for the events that I wanted to show off right there. Now I want to show off some functionality of these that I didn't get into. All right, so we're going to actually create a new utility. This utility is going to be a, another single click tool. This is going to be a pretty simple one, but I wanted to be able to show off this. What we're going to call is request tool shutdown. Right. OK, so I actually don't need on script setup. We're going to get on click. We're going to do like we did last time and just break this and then break the ray, world ray, get this ray. And then we're going to do a line trace. OK, so line trace this is going to be the same setup as yesterday. Do a forward trace to the world. OK, now we're going to add origin plus this forward trace. There we go for end position, just tracing 10,000 in. OK, we're not spawning anything, so we don't have to ignore anything necessarily. And then what we're going to do is on this, if we're if we hit something. Right. We are literally just going to say, break hit result, get that hit actor, get name. OK. And then on get name, we're going to give out this user message. We're going to accept. 
uh, and show user pop-up message. And we're going to finish. So we're going to select that, click it. All right, and you can see when we click it, a error message. Here we go. Uh, instead of just shutting down, let's come over here or use the same system to show off the uh, mess on-screen message system. So I wanted to come here. We're going to we can add right to the log. So let's not shut down on click, but let's add to the log. Uh, we can decide here if we want it to be shown as a warning or a normal message. And then here is just a message. So we now have a simple button to add to the um, log from the tools we make. OK, and now for more messaging, um, instead of just adding to the editor log, uh, let's put out to the message, right? OK, and then if you notice, there's a clear user messages with clear user messages, we get to decide. Uh, if we just want to clear help messages or warning messages. So if you do have a warning that needs to stay up, you can keep it up. I'm clearing it right away. <laughs> That's not how to do it. Okay, where this pops up is down here. So if you've used any other tools, this is normally like where the help information is. There you go. Those are the names. Now let's do the same thing. Let's add a user warning message though. And you'll see that this pops up in a different location. This pops up in the top left right here. Uh, in red, uh, it would pop up above our our properties here. So it's really useful. All right, for this last part, I'm just going to go over a couple nodes. I just wanted to make sure people knew they existed, and that is there is a set visible by name. So you can set the visibility of the properties that appear. So like, say we only wanted, we don't need this the whole entire time we're using this tool. There is an option to remove the properties to all together, but we could also just set not visible and then set it visible when needed uh, so that everything's loaded up and stays loaded. All right, and then the next property that has a binding uh, to call is watch property. Now there is different watch properties. You can watch property and have it specifically the type of property you want it to be. Um, but then there's also just watch property and it will do any property name. So. What this does is when that property is modified, so like in my tool here, if I change the mesh, it would be modified. So like here, we could watch on property modified. As an example, say we're creating new meshes that we're putting into a instance static mesh that we created. We could say on change, create a new instance static mesh for this new type and start instancing this new mesh. Um, or we could have it where on property change, we print something out. It could be anything we want. I just wanted to highlight these, but I didn't necessarily want to create a tool. Um, another one is get tool world. That's another just in case we need access to the world. But for the most part, that is all of the nodes that I want to single out. Most of these are the same, like uh, the property sets. Uh, we already went over the uh, adding and restoring them in my other video if you want to watch it. All right, uh, that's it for this video. Um, if you would like Hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. It helps. Um, and then uh, I'll be back uh, probably covering this tool a little more. I'll probably make some more utilities myself and show them off and release them. Anyways, thanks for watching.